What's going on, church family? Hey, it's uh, day three of the workshop. We just returned back to Phoenix, Arizona, and we just wanted to post this last video giving somewhat of a recap uh, for the days that we were in Mexico. So I'm going to let some of the guys share uh, either what was impactful for you today or what was impactful for you throughout the whole workshop. So, Pastor Kyle, why don't you kick it off? Yeah, I think for this last day, it was just uh, their willingness to work really hard. Uh, there was a group of women uh, who, are, who are studying and learning, and we had our breakout groups, and each one had an opportunity to present. Well, we had finished for the day, uh, but they still wanted to do their uh, their presentations. And so Dave Edwards was with them and just went, they went in another, you know, half an hour finishing their presentations. And so they really took as much time as possible uh, to gain all the knowledge that they could uh, to be equipped and to go teach other people God's word. And so that was encouraging to see how much they really wanted to learn it and be a part of it and not just leave, not getting the opportunity. Yeah. There was a lot of positives to this trip. I'll let the guys continue to share, but Ryan, what do you think from your experience here? Yeah. So the small group seemed to be the most impactful time and at each table, there was six to eight individuals um, at my table of the six or eight, only one was actually able to attend the conference and although that was almost a point of discouragement for me, the last day, the gentleman that we were able to invest in, uh, it really became a time of one-on-one. -on -one. And so the Lord knows what he was doing. And I think that gentleman, by the end of it, felt extremely encouraged as well as affirmed in his ministry. He was somewhat new to his position and the, the tools that he was learning, the time he was having, uh, the encouragement with other brothers in similar positions, the Lord really used all that to encourage this man um, in his in his newfound ministry. It's very very impactful for me. Amen. Yeah, you had some good one on one time with him, just to fortify him yeah. in his ministry. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of people there, but you kind of had the anomaly yeah. of a table with a few people that didn't yeah. come. But there was a few pastors there that really need to be equipped because maybe they're discouraged or. Uh, they just don't feel like they have the tools. So to have that personal investment, that's pivotal. Yeah, absolutely. And then here we have Julio Varela, all the way from um, San Antonio, Texas. McAllen, oh, McAllen, Texas. Texas. McAllen, Texas. And uh, Julio taught a number of the sessions and did some in interpreting for us. So Julio, how's it going and how's the trip for you? Well, it was really good. I was so encouraged with the people. They were so willing to learn and to practice what we were teaching so open to listen. And, you know, they were even asking if we were planning on coming back mm -hmm. next year. So, and uh, that was encouraging to me that they were so willing to, to, to be taught, like, you know, so open to our teachings. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. Uh, a highlight for me actually involved last night's dinner. Uh, all of the pastors and their wives, and then all of the lay leaders, the ministry leaders, came together for a meal last night. Uh, the food was amazing. Uh, the worship was amazing. We had a worship leader there named Danny, and Danny just did an incredible job. I mean, the whole place was just praising the Lord together. Uh, it was pretty incredible. But then Julio had a chance to preach on 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, which is the famous passage for pastors to preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. And uh, to, to fulfill their ministry, to be an evangelist, things of that nature. There's some pi real pivotal statements in that, that passage. And Julio just brought the word and the Holy Spirit really moved in the room. You could tell that there was a lot of pastors that really needed to hear that, that ministry. Can you recap for us just a few things in your own words? What did, what did you say in that message? Well, first of all, we have Paul talking to Timothy and uh, his spiritual son, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just talking about the mood in that passage. He's, it's a sad mood. No sad in the bad sense that, you know, but in the, in the sense that Paul is thinking that he's going to die soon. And he is talking to Timothy, giving him advice and talking about how Timothy should be always uh, careful in ministry, teaching the word of God. And I was encouraging everybody, regardless of their ministry, to, to you know, consider the word of God as their main tool, because that's what the passage says. And also I was talking about Paul's, you know, thinking. He was thinking, this is my last time. I'm going to die this time. So we don't really know if that happened, right? But at least uh, it's 
what I got from the text. And it's a powerful text. And we need to listen to God's word every time when we are opening the Bible. And uh, I, I saw people, as I said, I mean, they were so open to learn and so willing to listen that it was, a, it was for me, it was like, you know, uh, it was a joy to teach. So it's all I can say. Amen. Amen. Well, one of the things that was encouraging, and, and I think you mentioned it a moment ago, is they, they are asking us to come back next year and to put on another workshop. Uh, the sentiment that I heard many times throughout this, the last few days that we were there was, nobody ever brings this to Puerto Penasco. Nobody ever brings education to pastors and ministry leaders in the area. This is the first time we've ever had something like this. And I think what they were discovering is that if they have enough tools to study the Word of God, then they also have enough tools to disciple people down the road. And a ministry only becomes healthy when it stands on the Word of God. Uh, if we try to grow ministries with anything else, if we try to grow ministries with entertainment and programs and things like that, uh, maybe they might be successful in our eyes, but what really brings spiritual fruit and flourishing is when it's always tethered to the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, teaching people how to be transformed by the Word of God. So they're wanting us to come back next year, and uh, I myself am starting to pray, Lord, what would it look like to bring a couple of workshops to our church next year, just for our very own church family, so we can become more equipped in the Word, and then we can learn to disciple others in, in a better way. So anyway, there's so much to share. There's so much laughter, so many inside jokes. I mean, we just had an amazing time. When we get back home, you're going to have to ask uh, about how good of a time that we had. And uh, Ask for <laughs> chihuahuas. That's the key. Yeah, ask about chihuahuas. And you. <laughs> there's a lot of jokes that will come out of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Church family, thank you so much for praying for us, for supporting us, um, for really uh, sending us to Mexico. Um, it was just great to have you as our spiritual backing, and we're, we're grateful for this opportunity. So we pray that you would seek to get more involved as we seek to live sent, and we seek to send people out, out of the pews and into the nations. All right, God bless you, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Take care.